Hello and welcome to my Milo Advanced Guide. In this guide I'm going to be going over all of the strategies that I can come up with for Milo uh, in general. Um, we're going to be talking about specifically how to use her as a unit and I'm going to be showing examples. Uh, so to begin let's start with her best items. Um, I would say her absolute best items like with most units it's speed items. Uh, having higher speed increases your turn order meaning well actually decreases it. You come up sooner in turn order and also you get more turns overall. So if I have 40 speed and you have 20 speed, I generally get twice as many turns as you. So if, a, if an enemy unit has 25 speed, in this case she has 33, she'll occasionally get double turns. So that's extremely strong. Um, it's just really good. There's no downside. So the easiest way to achieve this is like double speed amulets, uh, two speed bracelets if you're on NG+. Plus. You can, get a, you can get two speed amulets and one speed bracelet for every new game plus you do. So you can get quite a few of them over time if you just keep beating the game. Uh, she can also use the movement bangle if you want. It doesn't affect her moon jump range though, it just affects her movement. Um, you could put a res earring on her. Uh, she generally doesn't die, I find. Magic bracelets are good. They can scale green mist damage. Green mist actually checks magic attack for how much damage it deals, so scaling that will increase its damage. Uh, alternatively, you can just throw health or durability items on her, like two health bracelets or, you know, health necklaces, whatever you have. So those are the items. I definitely think speed is the best on her. Or you can do evasion if you want her to be like kind of an evasion tank. I don't really recommend this. I think speed is just better, but it's something you can do. All right, so Milo is a shutdown unit that can deal damage. Uh, she can help with damage. She's not like a damage unit. Uh, some people will kind of claim that she is a damage unit, but if you actually look at the amount of damage she can deal, if you average her damage out, if you look at how much damage she deals throughout the course of a match, she will contribute to damage, but she's never going to carry damage. So she's she's good for dealing like some single target damage, but she's never going to be this like huge damage carry or anything like that. So to think of her as a damage unit, I think, is the wrong idea. I think she is a shutdown unit who can help contribute to single target damage. So the reason I'm, I want to get that out of the way is so that people understand, like, what she's actually trying to do. Because I think that matters. Like, what does a unit want to do? And what is its best thing? And in, in, in this case, it's dealing damage. Or, I'm sorry, shutting down. Uh, so, alright. Okay, so Miles' main use, in my opinion, is attempt bot. So what is a tempt bot? A tempt bot is a unit that just spams tempt. She has two tempt skills. I'm just gonna give her some battery. All right, so here's the main skills she's gonna be using: Heart Stealer and Power of Love. Heart Stealer has an 80% chance to tempt an enemy, which causes it to fight for you. Uh, tempted enemies, I believe, lose tempt when they go below 50% HP, or if they lose a certain amount of HP in general, it's, it tends to break tempt. It also could be random, like it could be a percent chance to break. Uh, someone needs to test that. It might, it might end up being me, we'll find out. Uh, power of Love, 100% chance to tempt up to 5 targets at range. So this one, Heart Stealer is point blank, Power of Love is at range, and it just lasts for one turn. So these are her, ma her main skills. She also can debuff and steal 1 TP each turn, and she can also Green Mist for single target spike. She does have Stardust, which is... Kind of bad. 60% um, chance to paralyze isn't the worst thing, but for 3 TP and she needs to be right next to them, I would rather just get an extra TP and power of love. That's just way better. Um, but it does have a 60% chance to paralyze for two turns. She also has moon jump. You can jump and then move again. And then... Um, well, I'm sorry, not move again. If you, if you don't move, you can jump and then move, or move and then jump. You can gain the use of one more command. So if you want to get extra mobility in, it's going to cost you 1 TP. But if you definitely want to use Moon Jump, don't use an ability first because then you're not allowed to use it because it'll end her turn. So it's something to keep in mind. So if you want to have her Moon Jump, you always want to use it before you use an ability. So you could like Moon Jump and then Power of Love or something and then run back. That's like a basic example of something she could do. Alright, so we will just do this. Just kind of turtle a little bit and then have her break out. I suppose these guys need to start <laughs> moving up. There we go. 
Okay, so she generally wants to tempt the best thing she can. So you either want to use Heart Stealer on a huge threat, like an elite blade or an elite mage or an elite archer or even just a mage in general, because these are units that tend to kill things, like that, that tend to kill you. <laughs> so I would say she should be tempting things that are huge value or get as many things as possible. So there's like two, there's like two things you should be going for. You should either be tempting a huge threat for two turns with Heart Stealer, or you should be tempting as many things as humanly possible. Uh, so in this case, what she can do is she can Moon Jump to here. And then Power of Love. Oh, I actually didn't Moon Jump to the correct tile. I meant to get all these, so that's unfortunate. Uh, I'll just get these two for now, I guess. So we tempt those, and then she can just kind of run back. Alright, we're just have these units pass. So, there's two use cases for Milo, I think. I think there's flanking Milo build, and then there's this, um... There's, like, flanking Milo, and then there's, like, team Milo, where she just hangs out with the team. And the difference between them is flanking Milo generally is going to be using Heart Stealer and trying to conserve TP, and team Milo is going to be catching battery and using Power of Love. Those are the big two use cases for her. Both are pretty good, so you can't go wrong with either. Uh, which, as to which one's better, Team Milo is way safer to use for sure. Let's see if we can kill these dudes. Cool. <laughs> it was like barely not enough damage. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would say Team Milo is definitely the stronger one, but flanking Milo, like on certain teams, if you don't want to run batteries at all, she can actually be really good. It's weird that he whacked him with a book instead of casting a spell, considering how much better <laughs> using a spell would have been for damage, but I guess the AI has a hard time with that. Alright, they're about to die. Okay. So yeah, so we're not getting batteried. She can conserve TP by using basic attacks or blue knight to steal one TP to save up for heart stealer. That's basically what she wants to do when she doesn't have access to a battery or when she's flanking with like an Anna, Piccoletta, um... Maxwell, units like this. Uh, so in this case, what she can do... I can Heart Stealer basically one thing from this position, which isn't the best thing to do. Or alternatively, I could, like, Battle Cry her. Now, if you run a bunch of... If you run, like, Julio as well as Medina, you can get a lot of battery off. It can be pretty good. So, alright, let's do this. Let's Moon Jump. So this is a perfect example of how to, like... Increase her mobility and then use Heart Stealer and hope it hits. Nice. Alright, so now we have a Battle Mage for two turns. Alright, Trish has Act again. She'll do metagame Trish things. Oh, they're resistant, huh? <laughs> not today. That's not really that much, that good of damage. <laughs> Surprisingly. Because they're mages, so they have magic defense. Alright. So you definitely want to moon jump before or after moving, but not after taking an action, because you can't. So if you want to get moon jump off, you want to make sure that you use it before you act. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use it, which makes sense. So, alright. So that's moon jump. Alright, so she can flank well with Maxwell, Anna, Roland, Huet, Piccoletta, and Flanagan. Uh, now, I'm not saying you have to run all of these units, but she flanks well with, with any of them. So if you want to have her flank, those are units that are good for that. The reason why flanks, like flanking squads are good is because they have high mobility and they can kind of act as like a detachment from your main team. And what this does is it lets you attack specific enemy units. So like if you look at Milo's magic defense, it's ridiculous and she has high evasion. So she's really good at getting next to mages and just like tempting them. So, like, in this case, I neutralize this mage for two turns by tempting it. Uh, so what I'll actually do here is, like, rotate Medina, double items. Now, Roland obviously needs healed, but this is a, Ma a Medina. This is a Milo guide, so if he dies, it's whatever. It's fine. Alright, Max, well, it's up to you, buddy. I think Roland has res anyway, anyways, so he should be fine. Try to kill these. 
Okay, so she has extremely high magic defense, uh, as well as good base physical defense, making her a low priority target. So the reason why this is useful, let's see, do you have Rezirin? He does, all right. The reason why being a low priority target is useful is because enemies will attack things based on like your defensive stats. So if you have, let's say, 70 magic defense, and you're standing next to a unit who has, I don't know, like 30, that unit with 70 will never get attacked by magic, unless it happens to be AoE that hits both of them. And the reason for that is AI tries to, it wants to kill you and it does check defense, so it will do everything in its power to kill you. So that's why it just checks for your defense. But because her magic defense is so high, she can usually flank for free and not have to worry about getting killed or getting targeted even because the enemy AI will try to avoid targeting things with high defense. And that's true for physical defense as well. All right, so in this situation, uh, we can either heart steal or someone else. So he's still tempted for two turns because her speed is so high. So one thing I could do is it'd actually be better to double heart stealer here. So I'll do this and then I can in tandem her. So then heart stealer more things because heart stealer lasts for two turns. So if you can flip things that are like imminent threats, that's usually the best use case. Uh, we're just gonna have Sarah Noah go over here and be a healer. Oh wait, he can't. All right, never mind. I guess he can heal Maxwell. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> heal Maxwell. That's all he has to do. Nice, he missed him. He wouldn't have killed him anyways. That, the reason I rushed over there is because I knew the mage wouldn't be able to do anything to me. Alright, we gotta kill this healer, that's for sure. Just stab this boy. Damn, dude. <laughs> Jesus. Alright. Okay, so we went over flanking, we went over high magic defense. Alright, so Stardust, I would say generally isn't good. Because why would you paralyze something when you can have it fight for you? Because what happens when things are tempted is enemies will attack the tempted unit, and if the tempted unit has worse defensive stats than you, which it usually does, it will act as a lightning rod for Milo, and also these will attack the enemies. So if their temp doesn't break, they'll, they'll do up to two things, like they can potentially hit up to two enemies, as well as get hit by any amount of enemies. So tempting is generally better than paralyzed, so I would say for that reason, don't even bother with Stardust, it's just not even good. Um, another thing to note is that Milo can move through units. Here, let's get her in tandem up. She can run through enemy units, which is actually really useful. Now, the reason why this is useful is because it essentially increases your mobility, uh, but also, uh, I just like stuttered like a crazy person for a second, that's funny. All right, it also allows you to slip past obstacles like barricades. So anytime there's a barricade, Milo can just run straight through it. This actually, can be used to kite enemies and to waste their turns because then they can just be chasing her around like a wild goose so that can be very very useful uh, and you can see here the advantage of high speed is we've just heart stealered heart stolen three enemies and now we have like more units look at that he just used magic on them so instead of me having to worry about getting hit look at they're wasting all these turns he went after medina that's surprising uh, another thing we could do here if we really wanted to is <laughs> is have her heart steal or something else. Now, it has an 80% success rate on the same level enemies, so it's not going to be as consistent as this. It'll be, like, a little bit less consistent, because this is these are lower-level enemies. But it's still pretty good, as you can see. All right, in this case, this should be more damage than a, a combo, because it's a crit. All right, Julio. We'll use best regards, get some spike off. Yeah, now we have like a small army of like bandits. Sometimes they won't attack anything, like you can see here. Oh, there he goes. It just took him forever. Sometimes they do pass turns, though. Just something to keep in mind. All right, I could probably kill this if I go here. Yeah, you're gone. See, so look at that. Roland was almost dead. I know a lot of people talk mad shit about Roland. Roland was almost dead. He has a Rezirring, but all I did was just had him run off to the side. Rushed through an enemy, now he's in the corner of the map, only one thing could hit him, and it had one, it didn't have enough TP to hit him, to kill him. So, there you go. <laughs> Roland is good. Alright, let's get a Sanctuary. These guys are just gonna heal themselves. Heal each other. Alright, let's see what he goes for, if anything. 
Yeah, sometimes they'll attack each other, but you can see there it didn't break the tent, which is awesome. So it's just, like, free, essentially. Alright, what I want to do is this. She might die, though, but it's fine. Okay. So she can run through barricades. You can use that to put distance between you and an enemy. She can also moon jump and run, which gives her 10 move, which is insane. She can use moon jump to jump to and from high ground, which is extremely important for her kit. That's something you're generally going to be doing a lot. Her being able to flank is one of the biggest upsides of her. Uh, her, high, her high mobility, evasion, defense, everything, like it all adds up to like one of the best shutdown units in the game. So she's just like really strong in this way. Uh, okay, so she can also target magical weakness with green mist as it deals magic damage. So what that means is it's a physical melee attack that checks for their magical defense. So instead of going off of physical defense, you can you can avoid whichever is the worst thing. So like if you want to target an enemy's weakness, so, for example, if you want her to hit an enemy, like, shield user who has low magic defense, she can use green mist, so it actually does deal magical damage, non-elemental magic damage. And then if you need to hit something that has lower physical defense, you can just smack it with the fan. So that would be like hitting a mage, for example. So if we run up to this mage over here, let's check out. So Phoenix fan, actually, it's going to be hard to tell because he's going to get one shot anyways. <laughs> Let me see. Here is a mage. Here we go. Also note that green mist can crit and back attack. So you can see here the difference, right? So green misting a high magic defense unit is bad, but gr but smacking it with a fan actually will still deal decent damage. Whereas alternatively, if we go smack this guy, green mist is dealing way more damage. So know when to use green mist and when to use the basic fan attack. Uh, sometimes it can be safe to smack things. So like if I smack this, it shouldn't break his temp. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't break his temp, and then this just lets us get this lets us get damage for free, which is something that's always good. So this is something you want to do. Uh, Frederica is actually relatively safe here because there's so many tempted enemies, so she can just straight up kill this guy, get some TP. Okay, so she can also throw a damage item. So let's say you want to deal AOE damage instead of using a basic attack. Dude, look at this! They're just nuking that guy down. <laughs> I'm gonna have probably kill this dude. Yeah, you're gone. What you can do if you want her to deal AOE damage is you can have her throw an elemental stone. So I'll show this in a turn. After Trish kind of just like runs over heal, over heal, runs over here and heals everyone. All right, Julio. Can you kill this? No. You can just smack it, I guess. That's fine. All right, Hila. I should have moved her and then healed, because then she could have caught it too, but it's fine. All right, Roland. He can just come back and heal himself. Yeah, these dudes are about to get comboed. <laughs> he threw an oil thing, that's funny. I don't even think they can set fires, they just throw oil. <laughs> They're just, like, obsessed with oil. Alright. Let's kill this. I should have threw an item and then moved, but whatever. Just end turn. Okay, Medina. So you can see here Milo's, like, getting TP over time just from doing basic things. Uh, and catching battery. So she can power of love right now if I wanted to. Um, I'd fast acting her, but she doesn't need it. I'll fast acting Roland just for fun. We're almost, we're almost to the end at this point. I, I think I hit all the major points for like her positioning, like the flank build or not. This Actually, what we should do is this. Yeah, because both their backs are facing this way anyway, so I think this is an opportune attack. Rush. Damn. Yeah, that's pretty good. And he hasn't gotten batteried at all. Okay, so she has options here. She could, she could power of love these. Um, I could Power of Love the stuff over here that just spawned in if I wanted to. I can Moon Jump and then Power of Love. I can Moon Jump and then Heart Stealer. Um, I can just, like, combo something. I can throw a stone. So if you want her to deal AoE damage, this will be, like, where we wrap everything up. You can have her target a weakness, like in this case. 
And if there's a if there's enough targets to justify throwing a stone, it can be good. Also, one thing to note is if she gets double turns from speed items or turn accelerator or whatever, um, she can always throw a stone and it has a very low chance of breaking tempt. So let's see. Let's see if it breaks his tempt. Yeah, he's still tempted. So like it seems that high damage breaks tempt, so throwing an AoE stone on a bunch of tempted units can actually be fine. Like a good way of dealing chip damage to them. And I think that tempted guy will actually die in the fire. So. Alright, so we'll do like a quick recap. recap. I'm not going to go over every point, but... The basic thing is that Milo either wants to be flanking without a battery. Uh, I mean, you can try flanking with a battery, but most battery units are kind of slow. I guess you could have Medina flank. So you could have her flank with Medina and then Power of Love things. But if you're flanking without a battery or playing without a battery, uh, you just want to conserve TP with basic attacks, Blue Knight, throwing stones... And then use Heart Stealer. Heart Stealer can be better than Power of Love if enemies aren't clumped together. Like if there's only two enemies next to each other, you're usually better off using Heart Stealer uh, because you still waste two turns. So the one way to think about the Tempt, assuming that Heart Stealer hits, because Power of Love is 100% and Heart Stealer is 80, assuming that it hits, if you Tempt an enemy and there's two enemies, like how there are two Rogues here, you have an enemy for two turns, assuming they don't take too much damage. And they will waste two of their own turns, and very often the other enemy will attack that enemy twice. So you effectively have wasted four enemy turns for two TP. Whereas if you power of love them, you could, you'll generally waste like two, maybe three or four, depending on if other enemies attack them. But if these are two isolated enemies, you're better off tempting just one of them so they fight each other. So that's that's one of the big upsides of uh, of Milo. And also you can. You can do hilarious things like tempt healers and they'll start healing you instead of enemies, which is better because, he, you know, healing units are quite annoying. So, really good unit, really good shutdown unit. Uh, with a battery, she's absurd. Without a battery, she can still get by. Uh, Blue Knight can be okay to, like, steal TP from bosses. Now, you don't profit TP, you just break even. So, let's say I have two TP and then it's my turn and now I'm at three and then I Blue Knight. Um... You lose a TP to use it and then gain it back. So it's it's basically the same as just using like a basic attack, except it doesn't deal damage and it debuffs. But it can be used to remove TP from enemies. So for example, this enemy mage, he actually can't cast things for 2 TP. Uh, but if he was at 2 TP, I could pull a TP off of him and just make him useless. So you can use that to cripple enemy mages and also to remove... TP from bosses to prevent them from using like big attacks and crazy attacks and her with Julio can actually deny a lot of TP from enemy bosses and just keep them at like one TP a turn which prevents them from doing a lot of things so it's definitely not nothing like Blue Knight actually is a really good ability uh, so actually we'll show it really quick let's have Sarah now go here oh he doesn't die he's at one health five oh my god that's crazy dude alright so we want to Keep Frederica safe, obviously. Kill this. Alright, one note about... Well, that's, <laughs> that's unfortunate. One note about the poison. Like, poison damage from uh, Green Mist. It caps at 30. It does 10% max health, but it caps at 30. We're just gonna pass turns until we get to the unit we need. Which would be my low, so... Oh no, Trish died. Here. <laughs> Moment of truth. Alright, we're almost there. Okay. So let's look at this dude's strength, 55, magic attack, 14. We'll blue mist him. Or, sorry, blue knight him. Steal a TP, cool. Then we'll check. So 55 and 14. Down to 52 and 12. So, that's really not that, that's really not that good. 55 to 52, minus 3. I mean, it's, the, the main reason you'd use this is to steal TP, I would say. It's like a circumstantial shutdown. So, like, the next turn this mage has, he can cast a spell, and it's going to be, like, a huge damage spell. So, this would be the target for things like this, this and bosses. So, I... You know, I wouldn't waste. I wouldn't use it as a general debuff. I would use it to hit certain threats. Otherwise, I'd just have her throw a stone or attack 
to be honest, or obviously Thames, because she's at 5 TB right now. So the better thing to have done uh, would have been either Power of Love these, or maybe Heart Steal or one of these mages. That probably would have been better. She, she could have Moon Jumped and Heart, heart Stolen this one. But yeah, that's Milo. Um, she's a really strong unit. She's really good staying power. She's really good durability. The the tempt can create lightning rods for her, which is insane. Her evasion's ridiculous. Her evasion increases when she's near enemies. Um, it looks like it's plus four. She has 75 otherwise. And then evade detection, I'm sorry, instinct gives her plus four evasion, which makes her even dodgier. If you throw two dodge, um, two evasion bracelets on her, this would put her at 89 evasion. And the way that evasion affects accuracy is if you are 50 accuracy versus 50 evasion, you have a 90% chance to hit. Plus 10% for side attack, plus 20% for back attack. And for every level, for every difference between accuracy and evasion, it's times two and then minus nine, and then whatever, like 90 minus that value. So if you have a difference of 30, like if you're 50 accuracy hitting 80 evasion, you have a 60% accuracy reduction. So you have a base 30% accuracy, and then 40% accuracy from side, 50% accuracy from back. So 89 evasion is almost like plus 40. So that would put like on average minus 70 to minus 80% accuracy on incoming attacks, which is quite absurd. And then if you throw her on ice, that's another minus 10. Uh, but she can create ice tiles herself with ranged ice stones. So one advanced thing you could do with her is throw her on ice and on flanks. And then with running high evasion, she'll be extremely dodgy and almost never get hit. She'll have like a 10 to 25% chance to get hit from the front, which is quite absurd. Uh, but I would still argue that just like tempting things is better because the enemies are usually not going to target her. Like if you look at this enemy, 49 physical defense, 47 magic defense. 51 physical, 67 magic. If an enemy mage had to choose a target, it'd be this tempted enemy. If an enemy melee had to choose a target, it'd be this tempted enemy. So she can create lightning rods for herself and doesn't need to evasion tank, but she also can. So just some other things to consider. Uh, when traveling with Hewett, she's quite absurd because you, you can blind things. Hewett can blind things and she can tempt things and the two of them can just single-handedly, I mean, I guess as a duo, like shut tons of things, tons of things down as they're just running through the map. And they have absurd mobility. Um, they can also deny enemy mages things, and it's quite absurd. So, so yeah, that's uh, my little advanced guide. Let me know if there are any strategies I missed, or if there's any interest, any interesting things you do with her uh, as a unit. Uh, if you enjoyed this, definitely like and subscribe. I still have what's it, like 19 advanced guides to go. I'm covering all the characters I know. All the characters I know well that I've run a lot, and I still have to run a lot of characters in like New Game Plus. I'm also still doing the chapter guides for, um, what is it, just like a deathless hard mode playthrough on a fresh save. It's also They also double as like general hard mode guides, so you can use them as a hard mode guide, you can use them as a deathless hard mode guide, you can use them as a fresh save guide, because the strategies that, that are in these guides will work, e like, much better on new game plus because you have better tools and more more options available whereas on a fresh save you have like limited options uh but it, it like it's like a triple guide essentially you can use it at a, as like general map guide hard guide or deathless guide and i also try to have like some commentary in there and like talk about things uh but yeah that's it for this one thanks for checking this out and see you